Welcome to TRS Clips, where you'll find happiness through your own curiosity. Very simple question for you. There's a listener base of Gen Z listeners. Okay. Which is people effectively born after 1997, but for the mm. sake of conversation, I'll say 1995, people under the age of 30 right now mm. in 2024. Mm. Um, in this new age, which is governed by technological advancement and mm. artificial intelligence uh, and possibly robotics in the near future. Keeping all these factors in mind, what's your professional governmental input to these people for their career as indians as young indians uh who are hopeful about their careers what's your input well again very wide question take it wherever you wish yeah i mean this is a almost impossible question but anyway let me say that look as i we have just discussed we happen to be living in a particularly exciting country and an exciting point in time okay mm. 15 20 years ago it may have been different and who knows how it will be in 15 20 time, years from now but at this point in time this is like being uh, in a you know in the hub of things there are lots of new things being built this is where completely new vistas can be created i mean <clears throat> you have created a, a career out of a completely new area so there are many such new areas coming up in india right now because as i said we are going through that phase where we are literally for the first time building many things mm. and there is also new technologies like ai drones etc that are blossoming uh, and you know there is huge things to be created in india from building better museums to be building better roads to uh, you know all kinds of new things so this is an exciting place to be now it's a messy place to be because obviously it's like living in a construction zone it's like mumbai as we speak right there's a lot of excitement about all the new infrastructure being built but you know it's uncomfortable because as the thing gets built it's it's you know it's like living in a construction zone there's lots of dust air pollution roads jammed etc but you can feel the buzz at the same time so i think if you want a comfortable life then fine other parts of the world or or maybe even or if you want to stay in india joining the government uh, you know upsc and all of that may be the way to do it but i think it would be a waste because this jo is joining the government yeah as you know usual old style bureaucratic you know uh, rigid pathways uh, to building a, a career Damn. Uh, that i think uh, 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 you know some people may want to do it i'm not discouraging those who want that is what they want to do but in a sense if you're not stuck up with being in that path i think this is the moment in history to go out there and take risks take as many risks as possible this is the moment to be a writer a sportsman a startup guy um, you know set up your own podcast uh this is the moment where these things will happen wow okay so i was eventually in this conversation going to ask you about this whole government jobs versus entrepreneurial fervor uh question yeah Wait. but let me say that on, when i say an entrepreneur i don't necessarily mean you have to set up a company okay i am more talking about having a much more free flowing risk taking life hmm. so that could happen by being a sports person by the way sports person is also an entrepreneur yeah. of a sort yeah. it could be you be a becoming a artist or a musician also you can be a technologist you can be a scientist you may be working in a lab you may be even a government lab but that's quite different from being a bureaucrat hmm. which is a more linear uh, pathway so when you are in an environment which is fluid and full of possibilities i'm just saying that those of you who are either by temperament or and have the resources to take a risk this is the moment in history to take it okay the end outcome being what end outcome being well some of you will succeed over the top some will not that is fine that that's what risk taking is but i think in a sense you will participate in a real moment of rebuilding of a country and a civilization and uh, this is this is that moment okay uh because i asked you such a general and wide question mm. i think you've processed it and please correct me if i'm mm. saying something wrong you processed it as a message to the masses of india and generally the masses of india when you actually scan the entire country and not just urban metros mm. like the places you and me are from mm. there is a general uh life goal of having extreme stability which is why government jobs are celebrated that much amongst the masses in terms of people will encourage so that's what i'm trying to break you out of 
you're trying to break the country out of well, certainly the audience okay <laughs> go on go so on so you know you can you know there was a time when we were a poor slow growing stodgy place uh, you know being an entrepreneur and maybe to some extent even today was a difficult thing you had to go out there deal with you know government inspectors bribe them deal with permits and so on and but slowly but steadily we have broken out of that into a much more fluid growing place now i'm not saying there aren't problems there are lots of problems i'm sure being an entrepreneur is a problem and i'm not everybody who takes a risk is going to succeed even in the best of situations a good proportion of them will fail mm. but for 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 suddenly we are a land of opportunity in many ways like america may have been in the 20th century right this is where you went to make it now even there good proportion of people who tried to make it failed but it was kind of there was this edginess mm. to the place mm. so not every it's not for everybody there are lots of people who are probably temperamentally set for leading a much more stable government job kind of life and they should perhaps do that i'm just saying that for the first time for those who are, have temperamentally have the capability have the resources whatever it may be this is the moment if you, if if you can think of a great idea just do it have you watched 12th fail no i have not okay it uh opened my eyes about the truth about the masses especially say in the 90s it depicted the 90s and early 2000s and i'm sure we live in a very different time now 20 years have passed so the world has changed um i do believe that becoming an ias officer ips officer uh it's a very very heartfelt and huge no no goal. so there may be a lot of people who want to do that and they should all i'm trying to say is that is a very limited view of the possibilities of the world hmm. yeah i mean let's be very clear do you want to be elon musk or do you want to be a joint secretary hmm So you're saying culturally we need to shift into We are shifting. This is happening whether you like it or not. Maybe a sharper <laughs> way of asking you this question sir is because yeah. you also work with the government. I would love to know what the present role of the bureaucracy is with respect to the government as well as where the future is going. See the Indian bureaucracy was created essentially by the British to control the population. Okay? When we say the steel frame of India Mm. okay this is sometimes uh, this idea is attributed to sardar patel but in fact it it is it relates to the british prime minister just after the jallianwala bag massacre what is the steel frame it's a cage it held together india after you know the gadar revolt the jallianwala bag massacre and so on and so this was really meant to control the country okay now independence happens now you would think that you're going to going to change things you don't you basically opt instead to going into a socialist economic model that actually gives the bureaucracy even more powers mm. so by the time 1991 comes you actually have a bureaucracy which is even more powerful than it was at the time of the independence, uh, independence. you may i don't know if you are old enough to remember this but if you wanted even a passport you had to get a gazetted officer to sign to yeah. sign off on it so this was all about control now that clearly failed us we began to reform the economy but the way we did it so far is not by reforming the bureaucracy but by reducing its powers of getting in the way of other people mm. so it's the same bureaucracy yeah but it now can interfere with people's lives a lot less than it could and that is the growth of the last 30 years has basically been by withdrawing the state's ability to interfere with people's lives it still can do quite a lot but it can do less than before but the bureaucracy itself has not changed okay it's what it used to be now at some point in time we have got to reorient the bureaucracy from being a control bureaucracy to being a service provider bureaucracy now i'm not blaming any individual ips is officer the system is not set up to deliver services so this requires a significant change in the way we think of our bureaucracy and the bureaucracy thinks of itself hmm. so i'll give you some example where is it that the delivery of services of the bureaucracy happens it happens on the ground right who is the person who does it it's usually in the villages or whatever it's a dm 
in the city's municipal commissioner. But you'll be surprised to hear that these people are the most junior people in the bureaucracy. It's usually some 33, 34, 35 year old um, who is the district magistrate is probably there for only 18 months, not even good enough to understand the district. Whereas in the scope of the bureaucracy, the, this is a very junior person. So what you need to do is to reorient the bureaucracy such that more senior experienced people are the people who are being DMs and uh, uh, municipal managers and so on. That's what they should be doing. Hmm. Right? We don't need uh, senior experienced talented people uh, to be doing what they uh, are led to do it to get you know getting into more controlling kinds of jobs. That's where the, that's where a bureaucrat ends up today after seniority, whereas in fact, they should end up on the ground. You should, you need, instead of 33 year old, you need a 43 year old in a district as district magistrate for three, four years. And this is because of the momentum of the past. It's the way the system was set up. You, it was a top down system where the service delivery place is not where the talent or the energy and the seniority is. It is in the control further up. I feel all this is again that art of economics at play. Am I right? In saying yeah, that, in a sense, yes. Uh, in terms of this is theoretically what seems like the next right steps yes. uh, based on where the world is at, based on where India is at. Hmm. Uh, do the current IAS officers or just generally the whole bureaucracy, are they aware of this change that's going to come? Well, it, some of these ideas are from them. You have to understand that... Uh, the, you know, the, the the people who come into any service are a subset from the same society you and I live in. It's your cousin, my nephew who are joining the IRS today. So they are not, their views are also affected by the milieu in which we, you know, uh, live in, right? So, so that is, you know, don't think that the views of the bureaucracy are very different. Mm. So if you go back to the 50s, they were the old I ICS officers who became the first generation of bureaucrats in this country. So they continued with a sort of colonial kind of arrogant, looking down at the rest of society kind of view, even into the, uh, even into the uh, 50s uh, and early 60s when they were there. Uh, by the time a new bunch came, uh, their attitude was somewhat uh, less condescending, but they had very controlling socialist kind of worldview. So that was what was imported into the bureaucracy as well. Then we liberalized our economy. Now it took some time for the change to happen because it took some time for our own mindsets to change. But the more recent inputs into the bureaucracy, the younger officers, uh, tend to also have a more fluid view. Very often their spouses are working outside in, in the private sector and so on. So it's not the old uh, insular uh, bureaucrats who have no exposure to anything other than uh, files. So I think you have to understand we are ourselves evolving as a society. Is the nature of the UPSC exam going to change going forward? Well, I don't know. Maybe the people in, in UPSC should know that. But I think... Uh, what I'm trying to say is that we need to begin to talk about uh, 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 administrative reform as a society. Eventually, what governments do is a reflection of what people generally want. And I can tell you that even within the bureaucracy, the younger echelons of the bureaucracy, they have a much more, uh, um, I would say, open market-oriented view. Even in, in fact, uh, I would say even significant parts of the those who are in senior positions today will are very different from those who were there even a decade ago. Okay. Because remember, those who were a decade ago were hired in the 80s. Those who are now in senior positions are were hired in the 90s. Now, in the next decade, those will be people who are actually hired in the 2000s. Mm. So they are all changing. And of course, the input is the input flow is also changing. So you're getting people from smaller towns, they come from uh, let, less patrician backgrounds. So they do not have all these old, uh, you know, ICS officer hangups. Uh, uh, there, as I said, their spouses may be working in other fields. They have cousins, brothers, etc., who are successful in other fields. Okay. So you may be an entrepreneur, maybe a writer, maybe a podcaster, and they will not think of a podcaster somehow uh, in, inferior. inferior. Hmm. I think the overarching conversation you're trying to have here is for people who aspire to be in the bureaucracy. You're trying to say, I think, hmm. you're trying to say that 
hey look at other careers as well don't be demotivated if you fail your upsc or you know why are you so hell bent on that i think yeah that that is one bunch of it but to the others i'm saying it's you know if you have some other talents please do those things mm. uh, you know <laughs> for a better future but a better future the country needs entrepreneurs i need podcasters i need sportsmen i need architects i need artists that aspiration to pass the upsc exam comes from a place of serving the country and maybe what you're trying to say is hey if you really want to serve the country also look at these things yeah these and it is also though well i don't know if everybody who wants to join the upsc wanted to serve the country in the past mm yeah it's it has to do with who had the power i mean did the ics officers originally join to, to serve the country absolutely not they were working for the british to actually colonize us so the first generation of bureaucrats were actually collaborators with the british <laughs> so the point of the matter is don't think that people are joining anything for any uh, uh, you know, some may be joining for Uh, because they want to genuinely serve or whatever a large proportion join because it pays well uh, or it, uh, you know uh, plays up to their uh, uh, aspiration of having power over fellow indians or whatever it is there may be all kinds of reasons why people join ias or uh, ias or ips or irs or whatever other service it may be i mean it's just not let's not just pick on the ias there are other services as well yeah. uh, the state services there are all kinds of civil servants on a very primal level it's higher status Yes it is higher status so all i'm trying to say is that look the world is a much more fluid place now mm. and you should uh, allow for that okay fair um i'm going to share one tiny learning i've had okay mm. uh when we began a hindi podcast i didn't know exactly what to anticipate from the hindi audience other than uh definitely spiritual content will work bollywood will work cricket will work and it was a very big surprise for me as an urban indian who has been born and raised in mumbai that there is this much hype and popularity when it comes to the top upsc coaches of the country like our two most successful hindi podcasts hmm. are vikas divya kirti sir hmm. and avad oja sir and when you speak to them you understand why they incredible teachers incredible command over the language but that's the kind of demand that even the the, the masses have even on youtube but i'm just telling you that's backward looking okay because you are in mumbai you would not have heard of these people so why aren't people in mumbai aspiring to be that because here the people you aspire to be are you know want to be a corporate honcho or you want to be a, an entrepreneur maybe a bollywood star that is what is your mental image of your possibilities in the hindi heartland so far we didn't have that growth dynamic so the person they saw was the local dm so that is what the so that's why i keep telling you don't get too swayed by you know some claims of national service etc some of them may be there for that genuinely but a lot of it is just the the social status hierarchy that one is exposed to now as up goes through you can already see major uh, economic uh, dynamics changing in up uh, you know with investment going there and so on uh, even in up this will change mm. how uh, how far away timeline was. i think it'll happen in the next decade so it it it'll happen faster than you think after all i'm not just in mumbai even in bangalore uh, you know or you know people in bangalore want to be uh, you know some sort of a great startup or uh, or in pune they want to set up their own vaccine uh, fact, uh, factory or whatever it is you and ultimately aspire to a lot of the people you see around you or the in the milieu you live in so i'm just telling you that that is what will happen um, and that is we are not even unique in uh, in history right you look at a, a, a country like the us yes there's still uh, uh, you know people who may want to even in the us want to join the bureaucracy there but as the us became a developed country and other opportunities emerged you know so there you want to be warren buffett or you want to be bill gates or you want to be mm. elon musk or you want to be a great basketball player um or whatever um <clears throat> you want to be joe rogan all of those kinds of things uh will happen in india as well a couple of questions one explain what the bureaucracy does in 2024 to a 10 year old and the supplemental question is what is the equivalent of that in america like who does that equivalent job so there the, america also has a bureaucracy india also has like the day to day running of your municipal services your passport office uh, you know uh, 
making sure law and order, some sort of a bureaucracy, government system runs it. That's how it will be. These are called public goods. And in most cases, the, the, uh, some sort of a state or government system will run it. And it, that is true everywhere. The way they are hired, etc. may change, but by and large, there is a standing bureaucracy of some sort, which does it. I think that's what my question was. Yeah. How, what is the way that they hired? Well, they, uh, well, they hire in many places. They have some, some systems of political appointees. So they pre bring in people from outside. We also have that, but there are fewer in number. I'm a political appoint appointee, for example. Um, but then, the, uh, or you can call them lateral hires. We, we have different, uh, there so different ways of doing it. Um, and then they have another. They have another system of, you know, uh, hiring through interviews or whatever. They have a standing uh, bureaucracy as well, who are hired in their way. They don't do it quite through the UPSC way, but they, they have some system, formal system of hiring people into the bureaucracy. Although it's again um, significantly more fluid than ours, but they are lifelong civil servants there as well. Gotcha. It is just that we have an obsession with this, mm. and it really comes from a legacy first from the pre-independence period of, you know, colonial hierarchy, then the socialist hierarchy, and then post-1991, even though growth has happened in certain parts of the country, where, as you can see, the, the, the social status of, of the bureaucracy has gone down. In Mumbai, it's not a big deal. But in a less developed part of the country, it is still a very big deal. And I, all I'm saying is, as we become a more developed country, uh, that will become uh, less important. Maybe you, your classes on how to run a podcast will become the more popular thing. Hey, if you enjoyed today's clip, make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel. You'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it.